Hi everybody, Rima from Eureka Fabrics here with our sewing tip for the day. And um, this is actually more of a hack than a tip, but y'all have been asking me, so here we go. So I've been wearing these cute little jumper dresses. They button down the front, they got ruffles, they're, they're really cute. And people ask me what, what pattern am I using, and I tell them I'm using this one. And then they're like, well, wait a minute, that dress doesn't look anything like the dress you're wearing. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I adjust this to make that dress. So here's the dress that I made with the basic dress pattern. Um, the changes that I made were putting the placket for the buttons here. I did a waist seam here and gathered the skirt into it just gentle gather there. Then I added the ruffle at the bottom. And then this is a nice little detail that you see on Victorian hems where it's got just that little flap coming over. Just give us another nice little detail. I also, um, I need a little extra room for the girls. So I have a small side dart and a waist dart here just to give it a little bit of shape. And then it's pretty much the same in the back, just gathered into the waist there with the uh, ruffle and the um, fold at the hem. And then all my edges are finished with bias binding. So I show, I'm show i showing the bias on the neck edge, but on the armhole edge on this dress, I turned the bias all the way to the inside and top stitched. Um, I could have done the, um, the sleeve the same as this, but I didn't this time. Not sure why I made that decision, but, um, you know, lots of options. So there is my little jumper version of the basic dress. So um, here's my pattern. I've printed out itty bitty so you can see it. This pattern also comes with a sleeve, but we're not doing that today. I mean, you could, but that's not what I've been doing. So the first thing I'll do is measure on myself from my shoulder point here um, at the neck to where I want the waistline to fall. So let's say my waistline is here. So I want to make sure, see how they're these pattern pieces are back to back. I wanna make sure that I'm cutting the waistline on the back the same as the front. So now I'm gonna cut this off or fold it up, or however you wanna get rid of the bottom half. I, I'm always hacking up my patterns like crazy. All right, so this is gonna be the top of our dress. So let's say here's our fabric, here's the fold, here's the salvages. And um, rather than putting the front on the fold, which is how this pattern is set up, I'm gonna put my front over here and I'm gonna put my back on the fold because I don't want a center back seam, although you could. Um, but instead of lining up the front right on the edge here, I'm gonna back off a couple of inches. And so this is gonna become my button placket so what I would do is I'd look at about how big the buttons are that I wanna use and make sure that from center front, I have half the button area available here and half here. So I need that much more on this. And then I need that same amount here to be able to fold all the way back to here so that the button can be centered there. Um, and then I'm also going to add a half an inch so that I can turn this edge under a quarter inch twice. Um, although if you're using the selvage, you, depending on how your selvage looks, you may or may not need to do that. Depends. If you don't have to double fold that edge, it looks great because it's nice and flat. And you don't have lumpy stuff. So, so basically I move this away from the edge so that I can create my bucket, button placket. And then I'll cut out my fronts and my backs um, with the back on the fold. Um, although depending, like if you're doing stuff out of remnants, you might, you know, you might stick your back here and 
add yourself some seam allowance so you can have a center back seam. You also might want to do that if you want like a little kick pleat in the back. Depends. So then the rest of the dress is basically a rectangle that is, so we got this times two and this times two, right? Because that's half and that's half. So a rectangle that's twice as wide as my the bottom edge of my bodice so that we can gather it in. And then whatever length you want that part of the skirt to go to. And then if you want to ruffle on the bottom, you need to cut a rectangle that's twice as wide as the bottom edge of the skirt. So the bottom edge of your bodice times two for the skirt, and then the bottom edge of the skirt times two for your ruffle. And then basically I just make the bodice, attach the skirt. Uh, you're also gonna wanna make the placket on the front edge of the skirt. Although, you know, you could just have a button down here and then have the skirt be solid. You could do that. Um, and then put your ruffle on on the bottom. To finish my edges on the neckline and the armholes, I use self-bias binding, which I really like. You can either put your bias on and then move, uh, fold it all the way to the inside so that it's invisible. Or I actually like to wrap the edge so you see that little bias binding trim. Uh, I think it looks nice. Anyway, that's how I make my cute little jumper dress. And I would encourage you guys to take our super simple patterns like these. This is why we make them simple. So you can hack them and make beautiful designs of your own. Um, often I'll take the neckline here and I'll change it. Um, you could, you know, cut this off and do uh, an asymmetrical hem. There's like a million things that you can do with a very simple pattern like this. If you have questions about how would I adjust a simple pattern like this to be some other thing, you know, email me and let me know and I'll do another video for you and show you how to hack a simple dress pattern into your brilliant design. Anyway, I hope you find this all helpful and we'll see you soon.